Hola amigos, welcome to chapter 4 in the Substance Designer tutorial series. Today we'll see one more use of the Tile Sampler node and start working on a more complex cobblestone material. But before that, we'll create a new utility node to add to our collection of generators. Start with a waveform node and set the wave number to 1 to have a single bell shape. You can experiment with different pattern types, but for this example I will use number 12 and set the maximum size to something around 0.25. We are going to use this as the base shape of a very simple blade of grass. Use a transform 2D to rotate the wave vertically, and then use the 2D view to scale it so the center is slightly above the bottom of the quad. Using a combination of blur and histogram scan nodes, we can now create a mask from this wave. Set the contrast on the histogram to 1, to have perfectly tight edges, and play with the position, the blur intensity, until you get a shape that you are happy with. Remember that you can always go back to the waveform node and adjust the size or the amount of noise to tweak the results. Next, we'll use two gradients to further shape our grass blade. The first one is a gradient linear 3 to get some bending on both sides of the center axis, and the second one a gradient linear 1 to curve the blade along its length. Don't forget to rotate the gradient 3 90 degrees so it matches the orientation of the blade. I also added a curve node to adjust the shape of the gradient and have a softer peak. We are going to combine these two gradients first, using a subtract blend operation. This will create a curved dome shape, which we will apply to the main mask using a multiply. Keep the opacity of these two blends to 1. After doing this, I went back to the curve node from earlier and adjusted the position of the curve points to have a more defined center to edge blend. Now we are going to reuse the gradient 1 by multiplying it over the main shape. This will fade our grass blade towards the bottom of the texture, sinking the height map in that area. This will be very useful later on when we scatter this shape using the tile sampler. Let's recycle this gradient a couple more times. For the next part, I'm going to make only two variations, but feel free to duplicate them and make as many as you like. Add two curve nodes using the gradient 1 as input. Then add a directional warp to each of them and connect the curve to the bottom input, which in this case corresponds to the intensity. Now connect the main height map to the top inputs on each of the warp nodes. Before moving on, here's a tip to improve the readability of your graphs. You can add dot nodes by holding the Alt key while clicking on a connector. This allows you to reroute your graph and minimize some of the clutter. Back to the directional warps, give them a large intensity value, like 100 or more. Next, double click on any of them to make sure it is active on the 2D preview panel and select the curve node. By manipulating this curve, we can give each blade a different bend profile. Let's start with the top one. You can double click on the curve to add new control points and use the buttons on the top to change the type of tangents. Now play with each curve until you get something that you're satisfied with or make profiles similar to the ones that I'm using here. The last step is to add outputs to each one of these warp nodes and save everything as a separate graph. Consult previous videos if you have doubts about this last part. With our grass blade utility node saved and in the library, we can now replace all these nodes and start using it on a tile sampler. Add one of these and change the amount of both axes to a high value, like 80 or 100. Then set two pattern inputs and connect each of the blade variations to one of them. 
Also on the pattern section, increase the symmetry random to 1, but set the mode to horizontal only. We just want a couple more variations on the bends, not change their angle completely. For the size parameters, increase the size random on the y-axis to make some blades longer than others, and increase the scale all the way to 5. Add a bit of scale random to get more variation. On the position section, start with the usual 0.5 offset and then increase the position random a bit, maybe a value of 0.5 or so. And for now, leave the rotation parameters on the default values, we'll come back to those in a moment. The last part of the setup is to add a bit of color random, and then change the color parameterization to scale and the multiplier to 1. This is not a bad start, but since we didn't change the rotation parameters, it looks more like the base for some type of fur material. Let's see how to make something that looks more like grass. Add a Gaussian or Perlin noise with a very low scale. Imagine this as the height map for some base terrain. You would probably want to have the grass growing always in a downhill direction. And we can achieve this effect by using the vector input map. First, add an auto levels node to get the full grayscale range, and then a normal mode, set to an intensity of 20. As you can see, the normal node has a color output that we can connect to the vector input map without errors. Now go back to the tile sampler and in the rotation section increase the vector map multiplier all the way to 1. Our blades of grass now are using the directional data from the normal node, causing them to be perpendicular to the slope. In our case, we want the grass to grow in the direction of the slope instead. To correct this, simply set the rotation to 90 degrees to match the rotation of our base grass blades. Let's reuse this noise as well. Connect it to the scale map input and in the tile sampler parameters increase the scale map multiplier to something around 0.4. Now the grass is a bit longer and taller around the higher parts of the hills and smaller on the valleys. This looks a bit better now, but the rotation is too uniform. However, if we simply increase the random rotation, we quickly lose the distribution from the normal map and everything turns into noise. Instead, I'll show you a better way to control the amount of noise on the rotation. Add a clouds 1 or other high frequency noise and blend it with the auto levels using the copy mode. By changing the opacity, we can add this noise to the normal map in a much more controlled way while preserving the general directionality of the base. Finally, I increase the mask random parameter in the color section to remove a few of the blades and add more variation. And now we can move to another common effect. Quite often, you will want your patterns to be facing other objects, and we can use a variation of the previous effect to achieve this. Let me remove all the scale and rotation inputs and keep the previous style sampler. And now we'll use the simple rock utility node that we made in the last video on a second tile sampler to make a nice and easy distribution. Refer to the previous video if you need some help with the tile sampler parameters. Once we have this simple rock field, we can extract a mask using a histogram scan node set to position 1, contrast 1, and connect that to the mask map input. Remember to click the invert button to reverse the mask. And after increasing the threshold just a little bit, 
the grass is no longer placed on the rocks. However, we still haven't done anything about its direction. From the histogram scan, add a bevel node and adjust the distance to get something like this. Next, we're going to blur it a bit to remove those hard edges. And finally, just like we did in the previous example, add a normal node with a very high intensity. If we use this new normal node in the vector map input of the grass tile sampler, it will be now correctly growing away from the rocks. We can combine these two layers with a height blend. Set the contrast to 1 and play with the height offset slider until you're happy with the results. If you want, you can use the Blur Rock Mask as a scale map input on the grass to have larger blades around the rocks, or invert it to have the opposite effect. Or you can also repeat that trick that we did on the previous example and blend a cloud's noise with a normal map to jitter the rotation of the blades just a bit. And with the last bit of theory out of the way, we can move on to the example material. This time, we're going to make a complete cobblestone floor material, ready to use in any engine. Today's video will cover the first part of the height map, where we will make a new tile pattern different from all the ones that we made before. Add a new tile sampler and set the size to 1. Set also the color random parameter to 1 so we can see the individual tiles. For this pattern, we'll use a function that we haven't seen before, Cartesian to polar grayscale. This node converts Cartesian coordinate systems, which are X and Y, into polar coordinates, which are angle and distance to the center. Let me connect the tile sampler so we can see this node in action. As we can see, we basically reprojected our tiles into a circular shape. Now we can go back to the tile sampler and adjust the amounts to make the tiles more or less a square. For this example, I've used 34X and 9Y. However, if I connect this to our main output, we can see that the tiles change a lot in size and the ones in the center are really thin. We can fix this by adding more tile samplers with different amounts in the x-axis and combining them. For this video, I will only add a second one, but try adding three or four samplers to make the tile sizes even more consistent. Let's have the first x amount on the second sampler and set it to 17x. Now, there are many ways to mask this too, but we can be completely precise using a simple trick. Add a gradient 1 and then another new node, quantize grayscale. This function will reduce the number of colors on an input to the number specified by the steps parameter. To match our tile samplers, set it to 9. And finally, add a histogram scan with contrast set to 1. By adjusting the position parameter on the histogram scan, we can create a binary mask exactly on any tile layer that we want. Let's try the first four rows. And now add a blend between the two samplers using our mask input. And here is where I realized that I blended the samplers in the wrong order, so I went back and tweaked the X amounts. I ended up with 21X and 32X respectively. Let's add an edge detect node next to equalize the tiles. Set the roundness to 0 and the edge width to 1.5 or so. And now we can also go back to the tile samplers and set the offsets to 0.5 to make a bit of a nicer layout. At this point, you might have noticed that some of the tiles on the rows where the samplers blend are merged together. This occurs because the random color on them happens to be the same. To fix it, just change the random zip parameter on one of the samplers until you see no more double tiles. And looking at it, I don't think I like the thin tiles in the center, so I'm going to remove them. This can be easily done using a shape node with a disk pattern, either subtracting it from the base or, like I'm doing here, 
using it as the mask and no top input. Afterwards, we can go back to the shape and adjust the scale until we get rid of the first two groups of tiles. And now we can also change the tiles in the corners, blending another tile sampler with a duplicate of the previous edge detect and using a second disk shape as the mask. And here's another useful UI shortcut. If you select two connections to the same node and press the X key, it will swap them, which in our case fixes our blend. Now go back to the last tile sampler and adjust the amounts until the sizes of both groups look reasonably well. The last bit of the base pattern is going to be adding a very small bevel to eliminate the hard edges. A distance of 0.01 will be enough. And this concludes the first part of this material and the lesson for today. If you made it all the way to the end, thank you for watching this video. In the next one, we'll finish this material, adding grass, dirt and pebbles and making all the textures. See you next time!